While I love the Pacers offseason moves and young pieces, actually seeing it in play made me want to make this video. While this is based off a game against the Wizards, an NBA team is an NBA team and I really love what I saw from Indiana on opening night. This Pacers roster has an outstanding balance of playmaking, shooting, defense, and scoring aggression. Today I will be examining this Indiana roster and why they will put the Eastern Conference on notice this season. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It does help me out a ton, and let's get right into the video. I've decided to break this video up into four parts, playmaking, shooting, defense, and scoring aggression. This Pacers team checks all boxes with many different players. Starting off with playmaking, while we obviously know about the magic Tyrese Halliburton can make happen, he is only one of three great playmakers on this Indiana roster. Andrew Nemhard and TJ McConnell are both outstanding secondary playmakers and make the offense keep going just fine while Halley is on the bench. While having too much is a great problem to have, I think a McConnell trade could be in the cards with him only playing 6 minutes opening night. Despite only playing 6 minutes, McConnell did all he could putting up 4, 1, and 2 on 2 of 2 shooting with 2 steals as well. While me suggesting a trade is half logic and half a Sixers fan in need of playmaking wanting TJ back, should he stay, TJ will obviously be a great piece. Andrew Nemhard, on the other hand, definitely shouldn't be going anywhere. The second year second round pick showed great playmaking flashes as a rookie and only continued that into opening night putting up 12 and 10 in only 22 minutes. Another insane aspect of this is that Indiana had the intuition to sign Nemhard to a four year contract that looks more like a first round pick contract than your typical second round contract. Nemhard inked a four year about eight and a half million dollar deal with a team option shortly after the draft and for Indiana more time of cap flexibility in acquiring Nemhard's bird rights will be huge. While cap space isn't an issue for Indiana right now to the point where they paid Bruce Brown $22.5 million, with Halley's extension kicking in soon, contracts like Nemhard's are very key. The amount of shooting on this Indiana roster is absolutely disgusting, and this combined with the amount of great facilitators is why I feel the way I do about Indiana. Essentially, everyone in this roster can shoot and shoot well. A key to me and what will be top tier floor spacing for Indiana is the shooting prowess of their bigs. Not having big men crowding the paint is great for spacing, and Miles Turner and Jalen Smith are decent shooting bigs, and even Daniel Tice has shot him at points in his career. While having big men who can step out and hit one is a huge advantage to floor spacing, it wouldn't mean much without snipers on the wings, and well, Indiana has plenty of that. Spearheaded by Buddy Heald, Indiana has surrounded Halley with a plethora of snipers. Jordan Nora, Bruce Brown, and Aaron Neesmith should all be good floor spacers as well, and I'm expecting a good leap from Benedict Matherin on that end. Obi Toppin also showed some significant shooting improvement last season, and Tyrese Halliburton will get him and the rest of the guys great looks. While it is obvious, I'd feel like I was leaving something out if I didn't mention how good of a shooter Halley himself is. Halley has shot 40% or above every season of his NBA career from deep thus far, and took his about 5 attempts a game from his first 3 seasons to 7 last year while maintaining similar efficiency. His jump shot may be borderline disgusting and not like a good way like I was talking about a couple seconds ago, but it clearly works. Now for the defense on this Indiana roster. While they don't have the greatest arsenal of wing defenders, having an elite rim protector like Miles Turner will have a much greater impact than say having a guy like a Shangoon and two great perimeter defenders. A lot of shots and all the easiest shots are taken at the rim and having a rim protecting big does wonders for defenses. But again, while Indiana doesn't have the greatest overall perimeter defense, they definitely have some guys. The big one is obviously Bruce Brown, who was the Pacers' marquee signing this offseason, and I absolutely love his fit in the starting lineup. While I don't know how long it will be until he is a starter, the defensive potential of Jerace Walker is also insane. Anyone who watched Summer League saw him absolutely dominate on the defensive end, and I think a Walker-Turner frontcourt for the future will have Indiana as a top defense. Also, the tenacity Benedict Matherin plays with gives me great hope for him as a defender. While I do love what Obi Toppin brings to the table, the future lineup of Halley, Bruce, Matherin, Jerace, and Miles Turner could be a top offense and defense and a legit contender in a few seasons should they stay together. The final aspect of this Indiana roster I want to speak on is rim pressure and scoring aggression. While I feel like this may be the weakness of this group right now, two guys who I've already mentioned give me hope for Indiana in this department. That would be 2022 and 2023 lottery picks Benedict Matherin and Jerace Walker. Matherin averaged nearly 17 a night in his rookie year, and I think if his shot developed as I think it could, he could be a legit 25 point per game guy in the right situation. 
While I know this is about rim pressure, my point about the shooting will open up his ability to get to the basket much more. Matherin also showed great ability to get to the line, which isn't often seen with rookies. Ben took nearly six free throws a night last year, and from what I can see, he has a great mindset and should improve greatly. Indiana, y'all have a ton to be excited about, and I'm excited to watch this team grow with y'all. I was a huge fan of Hallie and Matherin coming out of college and love their brand of basketball. With guys like Jerace Walker and Obi Toppin playing above the rim, snipers like Buddy Heald pulling from deep, and Bruce Brown and Ben Matherin making all the hustle plays, I think this team will be really entertaining now and a real problem as soon as next year. Sorry for the sharp change in audio quality as I'm now recording this on my phone, but I would feel like a really, really terrible person if I did not mention TJ McConnell in that hustle plays category. I have another Pacers video out from the offseason if y'all want to hear some more on this team. And that's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noty bell, comment down below, you know what I mean, your thoughts on this Pacers team, where they may fall in the Eastern Conference. I honestly expect them to, you know, probably be anywhere from, you know, a 6 to 9 seed. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, pr probably somewhere in the 6 to 9 range, maybe even, you know, 6 to 10. Again, they should 100% make the play in. I, th I think they should probably make the playoffs. Again, th there are a lot of, you know, really good teams in the Eastern conference i definitely do think this pacers team could be seeing the playoffs this year and hey man the sky is the limit from there again i love tyrese halliburton his game super super fun to watch and just you know what i mean hey i'm really excited again a buddy heel trade may be on the horizon that was discussed uh you know that would obviously you know take out one of those big snipers but you are going to get something back and they are going to have amazing cap flexibility for the next few years again you know i don't know if you're going to be able to get a real big star in free agency in a market like indiana unfortunately but hey man you never know i mean if they come out and win 45 something games this year you know maybe again I don't know what happens if they pick up Bruce Brown's option or not you know depending on what happens I think you know Indiana could you know I th they could definitely get like a borderline all-star level guy in free agency potentially you know if they start building something up but or via trade you know what I mean they, they do have some trade assets I don't know exactly what their pick assets look like right now I'm gonna go take a look at that I highly assume that they have all their own picks but I don't know what uh okay so, so they do have some other picks and you know a whole bunch of seconds so they definitely are in position to make some kind of move if you know someone becomes available because that might be the only way to get a real 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 big name in indiana but that's gonna wrap this one up if y'all enjoyed it once again please like it up sub the channel hit that noty bell it does help me out a ton a ton a ton comment down below uh if you're still watching right now comment uh i don't know i'm drinking a, a, a buy right now bai uh comment bye and i'm out peace